trying to carry our cross. Sometimes our own desires get in that way. Sometimes those desires that, that we have, you know, are oftentimes about the uh, physical things of life that we will not pick up our cross and follow Jesus. And, you know, one of the things... Or among many, you know, this group of people that we're going to look at tonight, they had a problem with following Jesus because that their focus, their desires was on having something for the here and now and they were not really focused on that which was coming or the, on that that was in front of them. And, you know, during all this time that Jesus was with them, those that really didn't catch up with him, that he was telling them some, some spiritual things, some spiritual truths and the way of salvation. They didn't get it right then, but you know, one thing to be thankful is that, that they were there hearing. Sometimes not all of us, we, we don't track, we don't catch up, we don't learn a spiritual thought or a spiritual process or a, a spiritual uh, principle the first time we hear about it. Sometimes it takes time and coming and coming and coming, doesn't it? Amen. But thank the Lord people are coming and coming and coming. If you don't get it the first time, maybe the second time. So in this group of people that we see here in, in John chapter 6, they, Jesus has just fed them. 5,000 people, most of them were Jewish people probably, on the way to the Passover, biggest Jewish, Jewish feast of the year. And they were out there on a the hill and Jesus was teaching to them and preaching to them. And, and then he fed all of them with just a few loaves and a few fish. They were Baptist. <laughs> no, I don't know. They were Jewish. They were on the way to this Passover. A bunch of them. Thousands of them. And Jesus feeds them. And then Jesus leaves. He goes to the other side of the lake and, and a group of them catch up with him. They're hunting him down. They're seeking for him. They're wanting to find him. You know, most people, or a lot of people that you know, we see come to church here, they're looking for something. They're looking for someone. And we want to show them that that someone's Jesus. We want to show them who they really need to be chasing after. We're glad they come. We're glad each of you come. But we don't want you to come here just because Brother Greg's up here every Sunday morning. We want you to come so you can hear about Jesus. Amen. And get to know him. And if you get to know him, you're going to make it through life. You will make it. Because he is the source of everything that we need. He's the sustenance of everything that we need. And also, he's the sustainer of our lives. He is the one that we want to point people to. And as this group of uh, people have followed Jesus, they have found him on the other side of this lake. And and what he's trying to get them to realize is that they need to trust in him. If you have your Bibles and you're right there in John chapter 6, if you would stand with me as we read God's word, if you're able to. We're going to read uh, just a, a short verse. John 6, verse 48. Say, so if you're there with me, Jesus says, I am. The bread of life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for this day. Lord, as we open your word, teach us who you are. And we give you praise for it. Amen. You may be seated. And as Pastor Brandon had talked last Sunday, the, the I am, there go with me. It is like the eternal life, the eternal God. That was him. He was here before time began. He's been around for all of eternity. This is who Jesus is letting them know that he is. But he is the, the bread of life that has been from always. From before time. This is who he was. 
And this is the one that we're coming to. This is the one that these this group of people have come to. And within us, there are many of us. Some of us, we are we let our own desires lead us and keep us focused on something else other than Jesus. Because there's some of us here tonight, we had to cut through a lot of our own desires to come and be right here with us tonight, didn't you? Because yes, there's many things when you went through your mind, well, I could be doing this or I could be doing that. Some of us this morning, when we left this morning, we made up our minds that we were just going to do what we wanted to do. Some of us will not be back until next Sunday morning. And that's fine. We're glad that you come. But what we are seeing, the more and the more we learn about Jesus, the more and more devoted we are to him, and the more and more we like to gather with his people and know him. And we're able to take up our crosses, fight through our own desires, and trust him for being who he is. So as this group comes to Jesus, as this group is, finds Jesus, and they, they're looking for one thing. Look at verse 26. This group has found Jesus, and, and they say, Jesus, when did you get here? But Jesus knew what they were really wanting. He knew what was really on their minds. And this is what he says in verse 26. Most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has sent, has set his seal on him. So most of, some of the times that we see, some of the encounters that Jesus has, sometimes he always, or most all the time, he wants to lead them to a spiritual plane, to a spiritual thinking, to a spiritual way of life, to a spiritual understanding. He wants to teach them something. He wants to teach them something that gets their focus and their minds and their desires off the things that just exist in this realm onto those things which are going to last for all of eternity. So the one thing he wants this group to, to have in their desires, in their hearts, and their mind for eternity is life. Where's our life going to be spent? Where is your life? My life, our lives, where will they be spent? And he wants to bring this crowd up. He wants to take them out of this world. And he wants to bring them up into heaven and teach them heavenly things. Heavenly principles, heavenly ideas. So some of our earthly desires and the ideas that we have down here, they will keep us away from the source of true life. They will keep us away from it. And this one thing that was keeping these people, this group of people, away from having life. Not, not just a good life, not just a life full of all their desires and things that they want, just part of the things that they want. But a life that was going to last for all of eternity. For all, forever, for everlasting. And that the people say to Jesus after he tells them, you know, you need, you need to be seeking something different. You need to be seeking something that is going to last Forever, they say to him, well, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? So Jesus answers them and says this in verse 29, believe. This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he sent. That you believe on the one that God the Father sent. This is the work of God. This is the eternal work of God. This is the everlasting work of God that he wants us to do is to believe on the one that he sent. Why? Because that one is the source of life. One and only one. Jesus says this to him in verse 29. And this is some background getting into to where we're going to go, to what we're going to see tonight. But in verse 29, he says that you believe on him who is sent. Verse 30 says this, or they say to Jesus, what will you perform then that we may see it and believe you? Notice how this translation translates one word there, perform. Some of our earthly desires may draw us into church that we just perform to see a performance. And, you know, I, I went, why is that there? Why is that there? 
This crowd had just seen Jesus do miracles. Are they wanting to see more? Well, what's he going to do next? What else is he going to do? What's he going to show? He gave me some food before. Maybe they want to do something more. Maybe instead of, instead of turning some stones to bread, maybe let's turn some stones to gold. Now that'll work. Yeah. Why do you put it? They want to perform. That's why some people come to church. They want to see Jesus perform. But you know what? It's okay if you want to come to this church to see a performance or to be entertained. For one thing we know is true, you will not be entertained, but the Word of God will be preached and the Spirit of God will convict you. Amen. You may want to see a performance, so come on. I think Jesus welcomes that. Because we're going to bring you up to a, to a level that's not on this earth. To a level of principles of heaven. We're going to teach you something spiritual. This is where Jesus was. They said, you know, Jesus, they say, Jesus, what are you going to perform? That we may see and believe in you. Performance will never get somebody to believe in Jesus. But the truth of the word of God will. It'll get him to trust. It'll get people to trust him. So what work will you do? This is why he said, Our fathers were they man in the desert, for it is written, He gave them bread. Look at verse 31. And, and bread from heaven to eat. But you see, sometimes our desires on this earth, sometimes we're going to take a, maybe a, a spiritual truth and we may bend it just a little or understand it wrong. They had a little wrong understanding about that verse. So look in verse Look at verse 32. Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, now these are Jewish people. Remember, they're coming to the Passover. They've got their, their lambs ready, probably, and they got their bread offerings ready. Their sacrifices are ready. Their grains offerings are ready, and they're hearing Jesus. They've eaten from Jesus, and, you know, they're, they're uh, remembering the fact that God led them out of Egypt one time. They had to eat some, some bread. And when they were in the desert, look at this, what he says, that our, our fathers, our forefathers, they ate man in the desert. They had it one way. They had it pretty good, Jesus. Look at verse 32. But God, Jesus, knew where they were going with it. He knew what they were thinking. He knew what they had been taught and what they understood. Jesus says this, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven. So this is what they were believing. Moses made that bread. Moses fed them in the wilderness. See, sometimes that's where we can get our, our desires of this world and wanting to know the spiritual things of the earth, of, of heaven. We kind of get them confused. See, they did not trust that God fed them in the wilderness. They said Moses did because this is what Jesus says. Moses did not give you that bread. He didn't give it to you. He was just a man. He was a prophet, a man, good. Why no man like him? Moses was one of a kind. He did many miracles before, many wonders. God used it. God did through him. And this is what Jesus calls him out on. He said, Moses didn't give you that bread. My father gave it to him. He pointed folks to, back to the sword, back to the one it came from. He pointed their thoughts, their minds, their desires. God gave you that bread. He gave them that bread. Moses didn't. If you remember when they were there, Moses didn't give you that bread. This is what he says, my father, my father gave that to you. He says, my father gave you the true bread from heaven. And you know, I, I, was, I was looking at doing some of Brandon's work in there. He gave you the true, or excuse me, my father gave you the, the true bread. The, the truth. I guess not just a little truth, but a whole truth. Because the, the truth, there's nothing else that can compare to that when he uses two articles that way, speaking of one truth. The, the true bread from heaven. There is none other. Only that bread. Well, what is that bread? Look at verse 33. For, for the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven who gives life to the world. And then they say, well, this, well, give us this bread. Give it to us always. Not just a little bit, not just right now, but always give us that bread. And then Jesus said, you want to know the true, true bread who that is? Jesus lets them know who it is because that's the question on their hearts, isn't it? 
Well, what is this true bread? What is this really true, true bread? Jesus says this in verse 35. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never hunger. And he who comes to me will never thirst. He is the, the bread of life. We can't say it like this. He is the, the true bread of the, the life. Because there's none other like him. He is the source of life. He is the source of our life. And that's what he's trying to bring these folks up to. They were out there and he had fed them. And he had, he had done all these things. They had seen so many miracles already. But Jesus wants to point them to let they will know that he is the bread of life. Remember that I am the bread of life. They go to me all the way back from the beginning. The beginning. Remember right before that, he had done said, my father who is in heaven. And then he says, I am. They go to me, the eternal God. I am. I was with him in the beginning. In the beginning, I created everything. Jesus is the source. Of everything that says you shall never hunger and never thirst. So as he is our source for everything. He is our source for life. Look at what he came down for in verse 38. This is why he is here. This is why he is. The, one of the reasons why he is the source. I came from heaven not to do my own will. But the will of him that sent me. He came to do the will of the Father. He came to do the will of his Father in heaven. The Father sent the Son to do the will of the Father that he should do this. Look at the end of verse 39 and raise it up on the last day. This is the will of the Father that sent me in verse 39. That all that he has given me, I should lose nothing but should raise it up on the last day. When you read down from from in chapter 6 right here, John, you're going to see I will raise it up on the last day. You will see everlasting life. You will see eternal life. These, these words and these times are, are spoken in through here as Jesus is our source. He is everything. He is the true bread that comes down in verse 32. And he is our sustenance. He, he, he's everything that nourishes us. He is everything that's going to keep you going spiritually. He is everything that has made a way for you to enter an eternal home in heaven, to be with God forever. He is that sustenance. He is that thing that fuels you. He is that thing that makes it possible for us to see Jesus. For he came to do God's will. And it is God's will that all should believe in him. Remember what we read back up in the earlier verses. This is the word of God that you believe in him whom he sent. This is the sustenance that we have that Jesus Christ is a picture of is, is the man, is the picture of a piece of loaf, of bread that fills you and you never hunger again. Remember sometimes as we get things mixed up down here, what we really long, what we really hunger for is a true relationship with the Heavenly Father. The longing desire of our hearts, what we hunger and what we thirst for is, is a complete relationship for all of eternity with God. This is what Jesus does. Look at verse 39. As we had mentioned, those who believe in him will raise that person up on the last day. Look at verse 40. This is the will of him who sent me that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up on the last day. He's our substance. He's enough to keep us right now. He's enough to give us everlasting life. And he's enough to raise us up in the last day. He is plenty. He sustains us. He was sent from God to do the will. And this also we see that he is a sustainer. He will 
keep us. And you can see these three things, source, sustenance, and a sustainer, all through this chapter in these different verses. But look with me. Let's go really quickly. And look at verse 52. The Jews part among themselves. How can this man give us this, his flesh to eat? So Jesus is going to sustain us. So how does he do that? What was he talking about eating his flesh? What was he, what was he, what were they talking about? You know, how can he give us his flesh to eat? So now Jesus is teaching on a spiritual plane, right? He's not teaching with things of the world. He's not teaching about physical bodies. He's not teaching about, you know, nourishing our bodies so we can do work. He's talking about nourishing somebody for an eternal home, an eternal life, everlasting life in heaven. One that he will raise up on that last day. How does he do that? It says this. Look in verse 48. Jesus says again, I am the bread of life. He says this. Your fathers ate man in the wilderness and are dead. So, so now one of the things that goes on in my mind, is, if you know, as Jesus is there talking with them, I think one of the underlying questions is this. Do you want that life? Do you want that life that they had? Are you going to grumble and complain so much about what you're eating or lack thereof that you're going to miss the source of who's going to give it to you? Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate this manna in the wilderness and they're dead. The manna that he, that the, uh, Jews were talking about. But then he says this. This is the bread which comes down from heaven. That one may eat it and not die. Then Jesus says in 51. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. What do you mean the living bread? Maybe that goes along with the I am, the ego of me, the, the living, the always existing one, the always eternal one, the one that has always been around. I am the living bread. I am just like God. I am the son of the father in heaven. I have always been around long. You want to live forever? You want everlasting life? You take my life upon you and you will live forever and I will raise you up on the last day. He's talking on spiritual not like this flesh. Does that make sense? Yes. Amen. This is where he is. This is what Jesus wants to understand. I'm not going to give you bread and you're going to later die. I'm going to give you everlasting life and I'm going to raise you up in the last day. The resurrection was one of the times that they were looking forward to. One of the times that they had been taught. Jesus says a lot of got into it. Jesus is going to raise them up on that last day. He is going to do that. He will raise us up on that last day. For those that do the will of the Father, and this is the will of the Father, that we believe on him on whom the Father sent. And this is the bread of life. He says in the last part of 51, if anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. The bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. Now, how do we understand that? How would they understand that? I don't know how they were going to understand it. But I can tell you what they were doing. Remember, they were heading to Passover. R remember? They were going to have their sacrificial lamb there. And you re re remember, they were, they were going to take that lamb, you know, to the priest, to, to, to the temple there, and they were going to lay their hands on that on that. Lamb, they were going to confess their sins. They were going to sit the lamb's throat. They were going to catch the blood. The priest was going to take the blood, throw it on the altar, and he was going to throw, throw a little bit in the, and burn the incense as an offering to God. Jesus says, I've got the true bread. I'm going to give my flesh for you. And I shall give it for the life of the world. And then some of our, our desires will take us right back. Well, how in the world am I going to eat Jesus? We're going to become cannibals? No. That's not what he's talking about, is it? Because he's teaching on spiritual planes. And we're right there with him, aren't we? 
We're seeing what he's doing. Everything that's going on, we're taking the background in, into play. They were with Moses. What went on when Moses brought them out of, out of Egypt? They had to sacrifice before they went, didn't they? They had the sacrifice of the firstborn. They had to offer. They had offered that lamb. Jesus says, you want a real loaf? You want a real loaf? He says, I am the loaf. I am the bread of life. You come unto me, you won't be thirsty. You won't be hungry. Take my life upon you. Take everything that I am. Let me nourish you. Let me be your nourishment. Not some food that your daddies ate and they died. Let me nourish you. Something that gives you everlasting life. In verse 56 he says this. He reads my flesh and drinks my blood. Abides in me. And I am him. As the living father sent me. And I live because the, of the father. So he who feeds on me. Will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers ate manna and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. So what bread are we feasting on? Jesus is our source. He is our sustenance and he is our sustainer. He is this bread of life. Well, buddy, how do I how do I eat this bread? How, how do I how do I eat his flesh? You know, when they picked that lamb out, they picked one that was spotless, that was perfect, no blemishes in it, perfect sight, perfect hearing, perfect feet, perfect whatever. It was just right. Jesus is a perfect love for us. We take his life as our own. And we take his death as our own. Remember he died for us to pay for our sin. And he accounts his righteousness to us a perfection. And he will raise it up on the last day, right? Because he was raised three days later. He's going to raise us up too. So letting Jesus nourish us. Listening to his teachings. Believing him. Trusting him. Following him. Serving him. Knowing that everything about Jesus. Everything that God said, we take it in. And we, it is nourishment to our soul. It is strength to our hands and feet. And it is a satisfaction that knows Jesus has provided all we need. Jesus will continue to provide what we need. And Jesus will raise us up. On the last time. So as we get ready to close. Go back if you can. Read down through these verses. And do you believe in Jesus? Maybe you know someone else. Kind of struggling with who to believe and who to follow and who to serve. Maybe you could help them with this also. But remember, Jesus is our source, our sustainer, and our sustainer. He keeps us going. He is the I am bread of God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again for this day, for looking out for us and taking care of us. Jesus, you're so good. And God, we thank you. God, we thank you for all you do. God, help our unbelief. God, help our unbelief. 
knowing that you can supply us for everything as we trust you. As our minds and our desires turn to you, God, you restore and you strengthen. God, you give help. You give peace. Jesus, you make us right with God. We thank you so much for it. And we do it for the praise of our Father in heaven.